What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about what's in my bag. To read more about what's in my bag, you can check the link below. I've recently received a couple of requests to do this kind of video, so I thought I'd make a quick video about what's in my bag for a day hike and then for a typical overnight hike. And that's just usually one night. Um, maybe I'll do a video in the future about an extended trip, but for today we're just going to focus on those two things. As always, if you haven't seen the channel before, please consider uh, hitting the subscribe button below. I do all kinds of stuff with hiking um, and gear related to it. Uh, first off, let's talk about the bags themselves. These are kind of my three rotational bags right now. Uh, so this is an older one. Uh, it's my Dekine. Uh, this is like a typical quick day pack that uh, have some swimming gear in right now. Uh, but yeah, this is like just if I'm out there for um, like a quick day hike, it's usually what I go with. Um, next up, we have this other Dekine, which I just picked up. Uh, I don't know the model of it, but it's definitely more of like a winter spring uh, geared backpack. There's some like pockets here for wet gear, um, for your goggles. Uh, so I've been using this recently uh, when I'm hiking anything um, in like spring month, attaching my snowboard to it. This bag has been really great for that. Uh, the space in it is pretty similar to what I have in uh, the, the day pack here, uh, but just uh, a lot more um, geared towards hooking up a snowboard. Uh, so that's that. And then finally, uh, for anything overnight, uh, I have this uh, Gregory here, which I picked up a little over a year ago, and it's been uh, just great so far. It's a Zulu, Zulu 40, uh, so quite a bit more space than these two bags here. First up, let's dive into what a typical day pack looks like for me. Let's dig in to what is in my typical day pack. So let's start off with sunglasses. You can never go wrong there. Uh, usually I just bring a regular Nalgene bottle uh, for water and uh, depending on the hike I might fill it up halfway or full depending on how long it is. Hat, always good stuff. So this is kind of like emergency stuff. So this is uh, basically an emergency bivy. You can get them at REI or any outdoor store for like five bucks and basically they're just, uh, you know, in case it gets really cold emergency situations, which I'm all about. Uh, so this right here is a very old Ziploc bag which needs to be replaced, uh, but inside of it there are some other stuff like an emergency blanket, I uh, got some fire starters in here, um, lighters, whistle, a uh, little mirror action, so uh, compass. So basically just stuff in case uh, things go wrong uh, for how much it weighs and for how much it could bring you. I always pack something like that in there. Uh, just again, some emergency stuff. This right here is a SteriPen. So essentially what it is, it's a water filter. So it's, uh, it uses UV light to um, basically decontaminate your water. Uh, so this is something I might not always bring, but it's good to have uh, if you run out of water. And again, for how much it weighs, um, no harm in bringing it along. A little first aid kit, sunscreen. Man, I've learned my lessons with the sun over the years, so this is something I will never leave home without. Uh, a little bug net here. Ooh, love this. So this is just a nice waterproof bag. So it's really good to have one of these for me uh, when I'm filming and it starts to rain or if I don't want to get anything that is valuable uh, or electronic wet, I'll just pop it in here. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, cordage, always good to have this, just uh, emergency situations again. Knife, and then this is my inReach, which uh, maybe I'll do a full uh, kind of review on this in the future, but it's from Barman. It's basically just a GPS unit, emergency unit. You can call SOS if anything ever happens, so essentially it's like life insurance. And finally, hand sanitizer, something I always carry. That's probably my first aid kit too, but I always carry an extra one. Uh, good for decontaminating wounds, washing your hands when you're about to eat, etc. And uh, obviously, in addition to all this stuff, uh, I'll usually bring some snacks and, um, if Juno's with me, some food for her as well. 
Uh, one other thing would be my Garmin. This is a Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix 3. And uh, it's, yeah, I've had it for years. It's great. It's uh, great for my triathlon portion of things and then also for hiking as well. So I always bring that. This is a typical seasonal gear. Next up, let's talk about some stuff that's uh, more seasonal or maybe depending on the type of hike that you're doing. First up, we have uh, micro spikes. So again, these are from Hill Sound. Uh, there's actually a broken one right now, but these are great for spring uh, or late fall hiking. We have uh, gaiters. So gaiters are great, again, for spring hiking, maybe winter hiking. Uh, I have these from Outdoor Research. Uh, they've held up okay so far. There's some Velcro fraying going on here, but uh, these are highs, which I prefer just because, um, you know, mediums and lows don't really make a lot of sense to me. These are hiking poles from Black Diamond. Uh, these are basic, just basic hiking poles. They're aluminum. They do sell uh, carbon fiber ones, which are a bit lighter. Uh, but for me, for how much I use hiking poles, um, you know, these do just fine. And obviously, as you can see, they uh, fold up here, which is great. You can put them on any pack. Um, and they're really lightweight as well. Uh, Mountain X and Leash, again, both from Black Diamond. This is a 65 centimeter one. Uh, they make different sizes, but kind of based on your height and the technical, uh, the amount of technical climbing needed. Uh, there's occasional, occasional hikes where I'll bring ice tools, uh, but this will suffice for most spring hiking uh, that I do. Helmet, uh, this isn't really seasonal, but a more of the type of hike. Uh, so typically I'll bring a helmet uh, for anything where I know there's going to be loose rock around the way, anything that's class three or above, um, and anything really that's pretty steep. So like a color would be good use for a helmet as well. And then finally, uh, crampons. In addition to what I showed before, this is what I'll typically add for overnight. Talk about overnight hiking stuff. So uh, first of all, this is my tent. Uh, it's just a passage two from REI. Uh, but what I would say is I cannot stress enough how important and awesome it is to use stuff sacks for your tent, for your sleeping bag. Uh, this one's waterproof. So when it, it rains or whatever, you don't have to worry about getting other things wet in your bag. Um, and it compresses so small. So I highly, highly, highly recommend getting something like this. Sleeping pad uh, it's from Thermarest. I've thought about getting the, the accordion one. This one works just fine. Honestly, this is a piece of gear that I don't always bring. Um, I'll typically kind of feel out how long I think I'm going to be sleeping, uh, but this will make things a little bit more comfortable and weighs nothing. I showed you the stair pen earlier. This is a Katahdin filter. Uh, this has been really useful over my years of using it. Um, it's does the exact same thing. It filters water as the pen, uh, but typically for like an overnight trip where I'm going to be drinking more and more water from somewhere. Um, the UV pen is great if you're moving and you don't really care, um, but this is nice to have just because it gives you that extra peace of mind. It is a little bit heavier and bulkier, so again, I won't always bring it. Uh, the Stara pen has worked great for me over the years, but good thing to have nonetheless. Tent poles, my cook kit. So the cook kit, this is from uh, GSI Outdoors. Uh, it's just a really lightweight uh, pot here. I just bring a little spork. This runs on uh, MSR fuel, pretty lightweight. Again, this is uh, 7.4 ounces, so really nothing. And then I use my little MSR pocket rocket, as they call them. This is just a really basic stove uh, and it hooks up to the fuel and you just light it and it's ready to rip. And of course, the pot itself, which I'm not gonna take out of the bag, you guys know what a pot is. Uh, sources of light. So I like to have this flashlight here. It's, uh, I don't even know who makes this, honestly. It looks like a Coleman. I've had it forever, it's just super bright. It's pretty light and it's a good backup source. Uh, obviously you have your phone, worst case scenario, but you really don't wanna rely on that. Um, and then this is my new headlamp that I picked up uh, maybe six months ago and it's been awesome. So it's a rechargeable uh, battery and uh, it's the brightest one I've worn to date that doesn't emit heat. 
Uh, I've had another headlamp that I wore for a while that was super bright, uh, but it burned through batteries really quickly and it also got really hot. So in the spr uh, spring and summer, it was just impossible to hike with because it just overheats you so quickly. Uh, this is from Phoenix. It's an HL60R. I can't recommend this enough. This is really, really solid. Uh, typically, I will bring this for overnight just because of how thin it is here um, and also for the peace of mind that it provides this is a bear bag uh, so there's some areas that require you to have a bear canister um, but i will usually bring this regardless of if it's required or not um, it's just a simple bag that has a velcro in here stuff your food inside and then it has the rope attached already so you can hang it to the tree either with the cordage you have or just uh, loop it up itself there um, yeah, this is a really nice piece of gear and it's super, super light as well. And of course, a uh, sleeping bag. Uh, again, stuff sack. Very, very key. Just like six, ten bucks from REI. This one's not waterproof. Uh, are you ready to go? This is just a 20 degree bag. And uh, yeah, it's been great. I don't really need anything super warm because my body just runs pretty hot. Since Juno was just showing her face, let's talk about dog gear. So uh, this is basically the same for an overnight versus um, a single day trip. Poop bags, obviously, I'm not gonna show you those, but uh, just a couple bowls here. This one's collapsible. It's both really, really lightweight. I use this one for water, this one for food, typically. Just started doing this with her, uh, but this is just a rough wear kind of uh, bag for her, which, fits on her rough wear harness. Hook her to here, so instead of pulling her neck, she pulls her back, and it's just a little bit more comfortable for her. Finally, let's talk about my film gear. Admittedly, this is always kind of a work in progress. Uh, so I bring my Polaroid uh, filters here. These are great for long exposure, and they weigh nothing. Extra batteries are so key, especially with the GoPro. Uh, which dies a lot when it's cold. Speaking of the GoPro, uh, I use the Hero 7. Uh, so that's actually what's filming right now, in addition to what I use here. Uh, I used to have a Hero 4, which tragically got lost on Mount Bras. So shout out to anyone. If you find that, let me know. Um, in terms of the, like, handhold things, like, I use different things. This one is my newest pickup. It's okay. I have another, like, collapsible tripod one, which is filming right now. Again, okay. This one right here is probably my favorite piece, but it's somewhat cumbersome and um, it's not always the steadiest, but this is from Alaska Life. Any any GoPro uh, extender stick is great, but this one's just held up really nice. And it gives you that nice extra angle um, when you're on a ridge line or something that you kind of want to put things in perspective in terms of like what's going on around you. Headphones for music, obviously, uh, but I've also used these a lot for audio. Um, believe it or not, the iPhone headphones have been the most consistent um, and highest quality audio when it gets windy uh, up on a mountain. It's been something I've been working through for a while. I've kind of tested a different, a couple different microphones, but nothing's really worked out great. So when things go crappy, I usually will bring these. And uh, in terms of my camera, I don't think I've ever talked about this before, but I go with a Nikon. Uh, so this is just a D5300. Um, this thing's been so solid. If you followed me along the way, uh, you've probably heard some of the things that it's gone through. It's fell in a river, it's fallen off a mountain. This thing is riding strong still, which is great. In terms of the lenses, this is an 18 to 300. So it's a quite a bit heavier uh, than the stock lens here. Uh, but this has been really, really great um, for animal shots, for um, you know nighttime stuff. Uh, but again, it's it's heavier. So if I'm doing something that's really long and I want to save weight, go with the stock lens. It's not great, but it weighs nothing and, you know, it gets the job done. All right, that's going to wrap up this video on gear and what's in my bag. Uh, leave a comment below if uh, I miss something that you always carry. Let me know what's in your bag. And uh, yeah, please subscribe not to miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.